Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here physically and online. Uh, we will present you an interesting project, which is the AI test and experimentation facility for smart cities and communities. It's a project that is being built by a consortium of European partners, and the project is named Sitcom AI. It's a five-year project that is co-funded by the European Commission, and we just started the project one month ago. On the bottom on the slide, you see some logos of the Belgian partners to the project, which are IMEC, Paradigm of Brussels, Steep MIVB, Brussels Mobility, Fari, Digital Vlaanderen, and the city of Mechelen. There are, of course, other partners in the project, and we will name it during the course of the presentation. The agenda of the presentation is as follows. We will briefly present the Belgian part, some of the Belgian partners, which are IMEC, represented by Paul Kusmir Jack, Fari, which is represented by Carl Philipp Kunegat, and Paradigm, which is presented by my colleague um, Eric Oquier and myself, Hélène Morel. So we will also explain you what an AI test and experimentation facility is, why it is funded by the European Commission, what they will offer to SMEs and businesses, and what data spaces are and why they are so important for tests. Then we will talk about the Sitcom AI project, which is a test and experimentation facility specifically for smart cities and communities. The Sitcom AI project is built around three teams. The MOVE team, which is about mobility in smart cities, the power, the power team, which is about energy and sustainability in smart cities, and then the connect, which is about common arch uh, architecture, common building blocks, and connecting the different tests, the different test and experimentation facility of the project. Then we will focus on the MOVE team, on the mobility team, because that's the team on which the Belgian partners are working on. And then we will work, we will tell you a little bit about what the Brussels partners are doing on this project. So let me present you Paradigm.Brussels, which was previously called CRB or CIB. Paradigm.Brussels is a public uh, institution of the Brussels capital region, which can be entrusted with any kind of mission related to ICT and for any type of public institution of the Brussels capital region. In short, Paradigm is the orchestrator of the digital transition of the Brussels capital region. We have different types of missions. One of these is to elaborate regional ICT strategies like data strategy, AI strategy, security, data governance. Another one is to promote digital harmonization, mutualization, and efficiency across all these Brussels public, public institutions. And how we do that is, for instance, by building a regional data exchange platform and a regional data governance office, which has been recently set up by my colleague, Eric Oquier. We also provide business intelligence and AI services to our clients, DPO services, we are in charge of the regional ICT procurement office. We provide hybrid cloud to the region. We are in charge of the smart city office and also the managed workplace for 
the Brussels institution, and information security and CISO. Another mission is to manage regional and local digital transformation projects and services. We manage, we initiate and manage business application for regional and local administration. Also, we are working on a citizen CRM for regional and local institution. We're in charge of the regional e-citizen disk, which is called isbox.brussels. Um, next to that, we have the management of the ESNet contract, which is a public-private partnership with Orange. And they are in charge of providing um, services for fixed and mobile communication in charge of the management of the fiber optic network irisnet also about infrastructure services connectivity internet connectivity and iot in the brussels capital region and last but not least we provide many ict professionals to our clients in order to operate the local ict environment and we do this through the non-profit association Iris Team Esbel Visite. Who are our customers? Well, there are various of kind. You have the regional Brussels institution, you have the municipalities of Brussels, you have schools, local police, the cabinets of the ministers, autonomous administrative bodies, the public centers for social welfare. So for doing all these mission, Paradigm has a team of professionals. We are 60, 630 employees, of which 45% works at the client premises in charge of their local ICT environment, and 55% is working for the Paradigm missions. And Paradigm is hiring. So if you're looking for an interesting and meaningful job, please go to the job section of paradigm.brussels. I will leave now the floor to Paul Kuzmijak, uh, Thomas, sorry, Thomas Kuzmijak from IMIC. So hello everyone, my name is Thomas Kuzmezak. I'm working as an R&D lead uh, for IMEC within the sitcom.ai uh, project. And uh, at IMEC, we are all um, looking to create impact for the society and we do it in different domains. We do it in health, agriculture, um, power, cities, mobilities, entertainments. Um, and because of our expertise within these domains, we come really close to the sitcom.ai project where we have the link with the mobility and the cities. Um, and we can really have an impact on that. Uh, so we want to innovate faster in these domains. And with Sitcom, we try to aim that um, on different levels, on the European level on the uh, and on the Belgian level. Uh, EMIC um, is, of course, very expertise within the semiconductors. Uh, so in our headquarters in Leuven, we have a unique infrastructure, uh, including a very big pilot line uh, to test all the new innovations uh, in the ship sector. This one? Online is fine, but it's just for the people. Yeah, thank you. Um, EMIC also has more than 5,500 expert scientists uh, working in all kinds of different countries, uh, bringing lots of expertise in different domains. Uh, so really as an R&D center, uh, we achieve many R&D innovations. Um, EMIC as well as, as a large ecosystem uh, with many world-leading industry partners. And we have also very strong ties to the global academic network and also very strong ties to all the Belgian universities. Um, what EMIC will bring in this, in this project is, of course, a team of, of experts in innovation, sense roads, mobility, uh, smart city. Uh, and with this expertise, we will try to assume the impact that we will have with this sitcom uh, project. Good morning from my side. My name is Karl Flip Kunigracht. 
Um, and I represent uh, Fari. I'm a senior, senior policy advisor in data spaces and local digital twins at Fari. Um, and I hear you thinking, what is Fari? Fari is a nonprofit research organization on AI, robotics, and uh, data focused on the common good in Brussels. And Fari was jointly initiated by uh, ULB and VB, the two largest uh, universities in Brussels, to promote multidisciplinary uh, research. Uh, joining expertise of uh, 10 research groups at ULB and VUB um, that are uh, focused on AI, robotics, social sciences, ethics, and legal aspects that are related to digital transformation. And uh, Fadi actually uses Brussels as a laboratory to do research with public administrations, with industry, but also with citizens, um, exactly to promote uh, urban and sustainable artificial intelligence. Uh, our priority domains are uh, health, mobility, climate and energy, but also participatory and inclusive society. Uh, Fadi, as you can see on the slide, uh, currently has uh, three pillars. We have uh, research innovation hubs, so those uh, are valorizing the uh, research at the 10 research groups of the two universities. Um, we have a society uh, data tank, or that's closely related uh, to uh, Fari, uh, which focuses on uh, data in society. And uh, recently, last week, actually, we opened a test and experience center in uh, B Central, uh, in the Brussels Central Station. Um, and of course, we welcome you uh, very much to come and visit this test and experience center. It's open to the public and it will show the results of the research of the research groups uh, related to uh, what we are doing in Brussels. And this week, we also launched uh, an AI academy, uh, an AI, uh, AI academy that focuses on training and um, education on everything that is related to sustainable AI. Well, I also have the honor to um, present to you the uh, the next section. What is a TEF, a testing and experimentation facility? It's a relatively new concept, actually, especially uh, when you look at it from the digitalization and uh, AI perspective. There are um, 13 European member states that already have TEFs in other domains, uh, but uh, at European level, this is a, a new concept. So a TEF is a specialized large-scale reference site. And what is important is that it is, it is open to uh, all the technology providers across Europe to test and experiment with state-of-the-art AI solutions at scale. That's also an important aspect here, uh, the scaling. Um, this includes, the, the, the solutions include both software and uh, hardware products and also services. So uh, for instance, in robotics, um, and the testing is being done in real world environments. The TEFs, uh, the TEFs will, uh, uh, it's in the future tense because the TEFs are being set up uh, as we speak. They will offer a combination of physical and virtual uh, facilities. Physical in terms of uh, infrastructure, uh, sensors, devices, uh, buildings, and so on, but also virtual data spaces, data platforms, and everything that is related to them. Um, and uh, technology providers can use them to get technical support, but also legal support uh, and other types of support in order to be able to test their latest technologies. The tests are an integral part of the AI, European AI e ecosystem, uh, as you can see on the slides uh, on the left, um, next to the EDIs, uh, ADRA, uh, the Horizon Europe uh, strategy and work plans, um, uh, the AI on demand platform, and so on. So they are part of the European strategy on AI. Why is Europe funding uh, TEFs? Um, first of all, to bring technology to the market, uh, but also to avoid that there is a duplication of testing infrastructure uh, in the European member states, and thus also to optimize investments uh, in AI services and uh, products. Uh, and the main uh, objective uh, from uh, the side of the European Commission is to actually support world-class reference technology infrastructures at EU level uh, um, in, uh, in the framework of the digital sovereignty strategy of the European Union in between other 
world uh, players that have a slightly different view on how uh, technology should be uh, evolving in the world. Uh, a fourth objective is to improve the uptake of trustworthy AI. Trustworthy AI, um, the European Union is a, a global front runner on this. Uh, and uh, they also want to um, uh, integrate this in uh, the rollout of the testing and experimentation facilities. And finally, of course, to support the European technology providers of AI solutions, also in the framework of digital sovereignty. So what is, uh, are the TEFs offering to uh, SMEs and businesses? And I also have to add uh, cities here, city governments. Uh, when we take into account the, the TEF on smart and sustainable cities and communities. Well, first of all, the TEFs will provide expertise and infrastructure uh, for the design and the implementation of AI methodologies in real world environments. So uh, it's not only providing access to, uh, to infrastructure, old and new, but also expertise that is available in the uh, testing and experimentation sites that uh, we will talk uh, about a little bit later. Um, the tests will also offer uh, technology provider support to validate their, their already existing conceptualized and developed AI solutions for their specific sectors. So the goal is to um, evolve towards a TRL level six uh, to eight and uh, make uh, the solutions, uh, the applications ready to uh, go to uh, market. TEFs will also offer the providers the opportunity to validate novel AI driven services in, and that's, that's the special thing about uh, all the TEFs, real life environments. So it's not a closed off uh, uh, environment uh, where uh, no outside um, uh, effects uh, will, be, uh, will be measured. Uh, the tests will be done in real life environments before the solutions are massively deployed. Uh, and also an, an important aspect to mention uh, when it comes to SMEs and businesses, uh, and it was also uh, already on uh, one of the previous slides, the TEFs need to collaborate with the European Digital Innovation Hubs. And those EDIs are one-stop shops for companies to improve actually their processes, their products and services using uh, digital technologies. And those EDIs um, uh, will uh, offer solutions uh, to or support to SMEs and businesses uh, in innovation services also financial advice and training and skills development, uh, development of skills that are needed for a successful digital transformation of the SMEs and businesses. There are four sectorial tests that have been uh, launched or the call has been la launched last year and all those four uh, sectorial tests uh, uh, have started uh, in, uh, in the beginning of this year. There's one on manufacturing, there's one on healthcare, one on agri-food, and then the one that we are talking about today on smart cities and communities. So the TEF on smart cities and communities, what are the objectives? What will it do and what will it not do? Uh, well, the, the goal is actually to provide the testing and experimentation facility for AI and robotics in smart cities and communities and to make the resources of those smart cities and communities accessible to European cities communities and innovative industry stakeholders, so the SMEs and the businesses, but also to European cities that will be able to use uh, the TEF sites to uh, test their own processes, products and services. Uh, and uh, why? Because, uh, or uh, what's, what's the aim here? It's to validate those AI services, as I said, in real time, in a real life context. The focus in this stuff will be on impactful use cases in transport and mobility, in energy, in construction, uh, construction and environmental protection, um, all linked also to the action areas of the Green Deal, the European Green Deal. And what is special um, uh, to this stuff is that uh, even though it is called a sectorial TEF, uh, it has a cross-sectorial focus. 
Uh, it focuses on cross-sectorial services and applications because uh, smart citizen communities are is actually not a sector. It's uh, uh, the testing grounds uh, that uh, can be used for uh, just about every sector uh, to uh, to test solutions and uh, applications. And finally, uh, within the scope is also the development and offering of a digital twin of some of the use case environments. All of this is framed in uh, the, not only in the AI uh, strategy, the data strategy and the data governance strategy of the European Union, but also in uh, the architecture that uh, has been drafted uh, at the start of uh, the financial uh, this financial period for the European Commission on uh, AI, uh, EU smart cities and communities. So when you look at the slide, you can see, uh, or you can uh, distinguish four um, specific layers. Uh, so this model is used by the European Commission uh, as uh, a type of definition of smart cities when it comes to uh, digital and uh, data uh, strategy. The bottom layer is the infrastructure, high performance computing, quantum computing, everything that is related to the devices. The second layer is the data layer, and in the data layer, uh, you will see uh, the mention of the uh, European data spaces uh, and everything that is needed in order to establish those European data spaces. The third layer is the interoperability layer with a focus on, on standardization and the establishment of uh, and, and linking up of local uh, digital and data platforms, making use of uh, already existing building blocks uh, from uh, different European funding programs. And then the fourth layer, the, the top layer, uh, is uh, the layer uh, on AI and data-driven solutions. Why are we doing it for? What is the goal of a smart city to actually deliver solutions to complex and less complex challenges um, at the local level? And uh, you can see also there that the AI-driven solutions uh, um, will make use of the TEF, the TEF uh, that you can see between local digital twins as a platform that can be used and the actual applications that will be developed. So uh, the European uh, Commission launched uh, this model uh, in 2020. In 2021, the first calls opened. Uh, on uh, the establishment of the different components of uh, this architecture and the strategy. Um, and uh, this is a, another representation of uh, this strategy. Uh, so you can see um, the, a, a very large layer on data spaces. We are all talking about data spaces. Uh, the definition of data spaces is still under development. There are different stakeholders that are working on it. Uh, uh, on the local, on the national, and on the EU level. The European Union uh, wants to be the integrator of uh, the uh, establishment of the data spaces uh, by uh, working on uh, 12 data spaces at the EU level that uh, uh, are the coordination or form, form the coordination for the data spaces at the national and the local level. And uh, the data spaces are uh, an important concept, uh, not only a concept, it has to be implemented also in the testing and experimentation facilities by uh, uh, specific standards. And when you look at uh, smart, uh, smart cities and communities, the minimal interoperability mechanisms and related APIs are uh, a central concept here. They will offer the, the minimal technical common ground in order for those data spaces and uh, the uh, the applications that will uh, run on them uh, to to speak to each other to be uh, fully interoperable um, and uh, digital twins uh, will use those data spaces and you can see on the left hand side uh, a new concept the cityverse cityverse is not something that is very much known today but this will be a central concept uh, in the next couple of months to uh, actually integrate the digital twins and the EU uh, data spaces and make them uh, actionable also on the citizen level throughout the European Union. So what are data spaces um, exactly? It's hard to say. There's no, uh, there's no commonly agreed uh, definition, uh, but the data space can more or less 
uh, defined as a framework that uh, supports data sharing within a data ecosystem. It's very simple, actually. You just share data in a data ecosystem between all the players in that ecosystem. It provides a clear structure for participants to, uh, to be able to share, to trade, and collaborate on data assets in a way that is compliant with relevant legislation and regulations. Uh, and that uh, ensures also fair treatment of everyone that is involved. Um, data spaces um, are a central concept in the EU data strategy and also in the AI strategy. Uh, and, and therefore, the uh, Euro European Commission has also established the Data Space Support Center. And this Data Space Support Center tries uh, throughout all the 12 data spaces that are under development to uh, create a common language and uh, also a common concept of those data spaces. So there are five actual challenges that need to be tackled, challenges with uh, related questions that need to be tackled in order to create a, a performant data space. Those challenges are on the slides. Uh, they are about business value and models, about legal and governance, about uh, operational questions. Uh, about functionality and about technology. I will not go too deep into this. Uh, and this all comes together in this uh, model uh, of uh, a data space um, that, uh, well, the building blocks of a data space actually uh, that uh, need to be filled in when you look at every uh, single sector where a data space will be established. And those building blocks are uh, grouped into four groups on um, interoperability, on trust, on data value, and governance. This is on the development currently at the European level. Um, when it comes to the data space on uh, smart and sustainable cities and communities, this is more or less the timing and uh, also the pipeline of the different projects that will make use of this European data space. Uh, it starts with a blueprint uh, uh, in the uh, project called the S4SSCC, the Data Space for Smart and Sustainable Cities and Communities. This project is ongoing and will deliver uh, the, the filled in uh, building blocks of the, blue, the, the model that I showed on the previous slides by uh, October of this year. Uh, this blueprint uh, will need uh, will be used in uh, the TEF, in the TEFs actually, uh, in this case in sitcom.ai, and uh, will uh, also be um, uh, uh, there will also be a consultation of the the relevant ADIs, the European Digital Innovation Hubs throughout Europe, in order to uh, make it actionable also for the European SMEs and companies. And going further to the right, you can see that uh, there are many different other projects related to data spaces, uh, such as the, uh, the Data Space for Smart Cities deployment action uh, that will be launched by the end of this year, where the blueprint of the data space will be validated uh, by, uh, uh, by several pilots uh, in European cities and communities. But there's also, uh, there are also other projects on the creation of a local digital twin toolbox, on the creation of an AI on demand platform for public data, and so on, and so on. The testing and experimentation facility for smart and sustainable cities and communities, sitcom.ai, is the project, uh, large project, uh, to deliver this testing and experimentation facility. Uh, as Elaine has already said, uh, the, the consortium brings together the capabilities of uh, about 35 partners around three teams, Power, Move and Connect, in three supernodes. Uh, the Nordic supernode, the central supernode and the south supernode. And each one of those supernodes has satellites and subnodes uh, bringing together sites in 11 EU member states uh, of the European Union. Um, there are links to the Living in You initiative. I'm not going to explain this one. Uh, when you go to the website of Living in You, uh, you will see what it is about. And uh, the already mentioned uh, minimal interoperability me mechanisms. Um, it is a co-funded project, which means that the European Commission does not uh, provide 100% funding. Uh, there's also a buy-in of 50% of the funding 
uh, by the, the national governments, by regional governments, the local governments, uh, and uh, also private sources uh, to be able to set up this TEF. Uh, the project will run for five years and will result also in a clear business plan uh, that uh, will establish a company. So after those five years, the goal is to have an up and running business that will actually uh, uh, run the testing and experimentation facility after uh, the project uh, has, uh, has ended. And I'm almost forgetting what is crucial here is that it's aligned with the needs of cities and communities in Europe. So the starting points are the needs and the uh, demands of cities and communities in Europe. This is the, the timeline. So in the first stage where we are in now, we are in the build-up phase. Uh, around month, month 12, the idea, the idea is, uh, not the idea, the plan is to launch the first services. Uh, from month 24 on, uh, those services will be scaled. Uh, and the last part is a transition towards uh, the, the actual company. Not going to explain this slide in, in full. It gives um, the flow uh, of uh, the actual work that will be done also in the testing and experimentation facility, building on the societal needs uh, and the policy, uh, such as the Green Deal, uh, mobility strategies, and so on, uh, that result in themes. Those themes are Power Move and Connect and sub-themes uh, uh, for the central supernode. Thomas will talk about that. Um, uh, look at the, uh, the markets and the solutions that are out there to fill those needs uh, of the cities and the communities uh, and test the actual solutions, AI-driven solutions that are out there uh, in the real, li uh, real life environments in the cities and the communities. So there are three supernodes, Central, Nordic, and South. Uh, the Central Supernode has four countries, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and France. And Thomas will explain what they will be about. Uh, the overall theme is uh, transport and mobility. The Nordic uh, Supernode uh, brings together Sweden, Finland, and uh, is coordinated by Denmark. Uh, the, the, the full project is also coordinated by the Technical University of Denmark, so they have the coordination of, uh, uh, of the whole uh, testing and experimentation facility, and they will work on uh, power, uh, on energy, and uh, uh, climate, uh, climate issues. The South Supernode is centralized in Spain and will have uh, Germany, Poland, and Italy, uh, and partners there as um, um, as uh, satellites, and they will work on, on connect uh, overarching topics uh, in cities that are related to urban planning, that are related to construction uh, and architecture in smart cities. And now Thomas will go a little bit deeper into our central supernode and uh, the Belgium and Brussels work. Um, so the central supernode, consisting of Belgium, France, Luxembourg, and, and the Netherlands, uh, will focus on the MOVE team. So everything around urban mobility and logistics. Um, and we try to bring in innovations uh, within these facilities. So if there is like a startup or, or a city uh, which has a concrete solution or a concrete problem in, in this domain, uh, we try to bring it in closer um, to our facilities. Um, of course, if you check at the highway today, we do have lots of mobility data sources currently available. Uh, we have AMPR cameras, telco data, uh, floating car data, citizen science sensors, traffic sensors. They are all there, all in their separate silos. Uh, but how can we bring them together and how can we enable startups to access this data, uh, to train their solutions on and, and get rid of the problems that we have currently? And we're not only looking at, at uh, data um, from, from cars itself, but for example, what we can do with cameras, uh, we can do uh, road monitoring. Huh? If there are tears in the infrastructure, maybe we can already have a solution that can tell or predict in advance, ah, maybe this road is going to break down. Shouldn't we already, as, as prescriptive, um, uh, fix the road before it actually breaks? And we can all do these kinds of use cases itself. 
Um, if we focus a bit more into some other, some other uh, more specific use cases, uh, for example, bike data. Uh, we can do a lot with, with bikes. We have data from apps like streamers, skippers, or standards like the GBFS data. Um, what you can do with, with bike data, uh, let's, let's imagine you're biking in a city, it's raining a lot, uh, you need to go to your work, um, oh shit, you're right now in front of a red light, standing for five minutes uh, still, okay, this of course is not that uh, likable. Maybe an AI can tell the traffic lights, yeah, you should be on green because yeah, the weather is, is, is not that good and we have also lots of uh, bikes coming by because we see in a previous uh, point there is lots of traffic. Maybe an AI can plan that, uh, and we can have uh, weather mode switching prescriptions. If you look at pedestrians, of course, uh, we all have our smartphone with us, uh, which generates lots of data. So we have our telco footfall data, uh, but what can we do with it? Uh, also here, uh, we can check into inclusivity in, in mobility as well as safety. Uh, maybe you need to, you're, you're a tourist, uh, you come to a city, and you check, okay, what is the fastest way? But the fastest way is not often the safest way in a city, for example. Uh, maybe we can do something around that. And AI can plan a better and safer, more inclusive route. Um, now for the test facilities itself, we already have, have um, some facilities uh, ready or at least scoped around some sub-teams. Uh, if you check, for example, in France, we have our four French partners, so System X, uh, UGE, uh, UTAC, and LME, all partners with a really strong R&D focus on uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, so, of course, uh, we will focus in France on autonomous vehicles, um, and we have a testing uh, circuit or testing track over there near Paris, uh, where we can test mobility solutions. Uh, let's, for example, check... Uh, Okay, um, we have a package to, that needs to be delivered, um, but uh, we don't have the, the right personnel or uh, it, it can be more efficient. Maybe some autonomous vehicle can deliver the package to your door as last mile logistics. Uh, and how can we test it? Okay, we, we will guide the customers which have innovative IDs in autonomous vehicles uh, subdomain towards this facility in France. Uh, if it's tested, then get a, they can get a certification and maybe the city uh, can help them as well. If we check our facility in Luxembourg, we have our partner list, uh, and they have a really uh, big focus on electromobility. So electromobility is getting more and more important uh, towards the future uh, with the transition of the cars uh, from fossil fuels to electromobility. Um, but that gives also some, some opportunities and, and maybe some problems that we might solve with AI. Um, let's, let's see. Uh, we have a city, it's full of charging stations, but at one time we have... Uh, we have so many cars coming in, all guiding towards a specific zone to load, and maybe another zone has less load. Um, maybe an algorithm can predict the planning on that and guide, uh, guide car users who need to load their uh, car towards the right and, and available station. Um, but also, uh, for a city, it's often uh, not easy and, and to know where they need to put the charging stations. And so maybe an AI can give insights in that with some analytics. Uh, so if we have uh, a really cool customer with an innovative ID around this team, uh, we will guard them towards the facility in Luxembourg. Our uh, Dutch partner is the city of Eindhoven, um, and they have a, a very complex crossroad in Eindhoven, uh, equipped with lots of sensors, so noise sensors, air sensors, uh, cameras, traffic light sensors, um, and they can really optimize how um, a, a crossroad works over there. Uh, and let's have the use case. Um, for example, there is a car which is uh, illegally speeding. It's, it's driving at 200 kilometers per hour. It's a fast car making lots of noise. Uh, maybe some sensor can detect the noise and see, okay, mm, this is not some, some good behavior. A camera will check, make a picture of the car. Uh, the police can be notified. These are all interesting use cases. Uh, not only this, also the safety. Uh, let's see, we have lots of pedestrians coming by. Um, and and as the, again, with the weather, we don't want the pedestrians standing still for five minutes in the rain. Maybe an AI can optimize that uh, on the fly instead of having a hard-coded um, algorithm to change the lights. In Belgium uh, itself, we, we are lucky to have two facilities. Uh, so we have our two cities of Brussels and Mechelen, uh, who will be uh, facilitating uh, such a test center. 
Um, what we really aim to do in Belgium is, is really be a leading country uh, within this testing and experimentation facilities um, relevant to AI, but in the domain of urban mobility and logistics. Uh, itself, it's quite a broad domain still, um, but we do have certain focus points, uh, multimodality, uh, pedestrians, bikes, traffic flow, uh, mobility points, uh, and public transport. Uh, but how can we bring AI towards these teams? Um, one of the requirements that we will build within the cities is, of course, a data space. Uh, so both cities will have its own data space with data for mobility onboarded into it. Um, and what it also has as a benefit for the city is we'll bring closer the startups and, and the, the, yeah, the companies with innovative solutions towards the cities. Uh, it's easier for a city to actually uh, get into the buying process of a solution once it's already been tested uh, in a city itself. And for a company who has an innovative solution, they often don't have uh, real validation. Uh, so why don't we just validate the solution within the city? The city sees what kind of uh, positive impact it has, uh, and the city can have benefit from it. Um, both cities will also uh, have a regulatory sandbox later on in the project. Uh, but for us, it's really about helping uh, the startups develop their solutions faster. Uh, and again, the, the partners within uh, our Belgium facilities will be uh, IMEC, Mechelen, Agentschap Digitaal Vlaanderen, FARI, MIVB, uh, Brussels Mobilité, and Paradigm. Uh, of course, we don't start from, from the beginning in, in Belgium. We have already lots of projects done. Uh, one of the projects, for example, in Mechelen is City Flows, where we uh, have a view on the multimodal flows within the city. Uh, let's change, for example, the closing of a city street uh, near a school. Let's see the effects in a real digital twin uh, happening over there. With this expertise from the previous projects, we can really guide towards what kind of data do we have available and also what can we do with the data. Um, but really, we invite the startups to come with innovative ideas uh, later on in the project and let us help them and let the startups help us. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Oquier from Paradigm. Uh, we, we will have now a, a Zoom on the Brussels partner, uh, which are uh, Paradigm. Uh, STIB MIVB, which is the public transport uh, operator, Brussels Mobility, which is the public transport authority, but which is also the public uh, service in charge of the mobility infrastructure, and FARI. So um, why a Paradigm uh, has uh, decided uh, to, 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 to go to this project is that it's because uh, in March uh, 2021, uh, the Brussels government the, voted or uh, accepted uh, the Brussels data strategy, uh, which aims to uh, implement a data-centric architecture uh, within our, all of our administration. Um, the second goal also is to uh, exploit, standardize, and uh, supply high-quality data uh, as well as stimulate the administration to share and exchange those data. Uh, we want also to comply to the new, uh, uh, to the coming uh, regulations uh, related to the protection of citizens and enterprise, but also the, the, the new regulations on data at the, the European level. And uh, the, the last aspect is also to uh, integrate a digitally responsible approach uh, by coordinating and harmonizing data exchange between administration. Um, so this project is really uh, aligned uh, with uh, this strategy. Um, in the in this this uh, government governmental strategy strategy, we can distinguish two uh, main aspects. First, uh, the the we we decided to build a, a regional data platform, uh, which uh, aims to uh, facilitate the, the sharing of data, uh, to uh, valorize those data. Uh, through a data hub, and then also to have some uh, governan uh, governance tools uh, for the documentation and the publication of the, the metadata of the, uh, of the data we, we exchange between the administration. But more, moreover, um, we believe that uh, this is not uh, only a question of tools, and we also, um, uh, the government also pushed the creation of um, a governance, uh, a regional data governance 
and uh, through a federated uh, model. So uh, there is the Regional Data Governance Office, uh, which I, I have the, 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 the pleasure to lead. And we decided to build a network of um, local data administrators, so kind of CDOs for all the, the institutions uh, of the Brussels region. And we, uh, our ambition is to build a real ecosystem of, um, of uh, local data administrators to um, encourage and increase the sharing uh, of data. So we do this through um, uh, the Regional Data Governance Committee uh, uh, that meets uh, regularly. And the role of this governance is to uh, initiate, initiate sorry, the, the change uh, inside the region by training a uh, community of practice. Uh, we also have a role on publishing and, and creating data management best practices. And also by, um, we have also, also a role of the data regulation through uh, the selection of standards, uh, the, the, the management of, uh, of a data catalog. Um, so in this project, the role of Paradigm uh, in, in the, the SITCOM AI project will be to work on the standardization of Brussels data and metadata. Uh, we, we will be inspired by, but by the, the, what is uh, currently done by the, the Flemish region. And uh, we will support the public sector in the efforts to increase data quality, uh, which is uh, you know, cr uh, crucial for AI use. Uh, we will have also to align the uh, existing uh, regional data platform with the data spaces architecture uh, and this uh, at different level, uh, technological, legal, and uh, business uh, level. And then uh, uh, my, my um, colleagues here already mentioned it, but we will be the place for the test and experimentation facility in Brussels. Uh, that will be uh, our three main roles in this project. Um, the role of STIB uh, MIVB uh, in the Brussels uh, and Mobility Sitcom AI, uh, they will act here mainly as a mobility data provider. Uh, they will work with us for the, the, the selection uh, and the implementation of the, 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 the data uh, standards. Um, they will also uh, um, deploy new IoT uh, data uh, uh, sensors and uh, also they will help us in uh, the legal expertise for uh, mobility data sharing. Um, Steve and Mivebe and Brussels Mobility are also working uh, in the project to build the real use case uh, around the multimodal, multimodal mobility. Um, and as all of us here, they will uh, work on the digital twin and the AI part. Um, the role of Carl Philip. Thank you. Switching speakers again. Um, the role of Fadi in the project uh, is uh, focused on the, the aspects that I already mentioned when I presented Fadi. Uh, we will work on the uh, AI regulatory sandboxing for Brussels, uh, but uh, also for Mechelen. So AI regulatory sandboxing is uh, also a relatively new concept. It's, it's launched in the uh, to be approved AI Act. And there currently is a, a pilot project in Spain to set up or to, to see what the needs are to set up a, a national level AI regulatory sandbox. But next to that, um, other pilot projects are also uh, run in uh, other countries. And we aim to have... Uh, a legal and regulatory AI sandbox attached to our uh, dev sites in uh, Brussels and Mechelen. And uh, from the research of our uh, 10 research groups of ELB and VUB, we will offer the expertise to set them up. Um, what is also important is that uh, trust is uh, quite crucial when it comes to AI. Um, trust uh, is something where uh, Fadi has a lot of expertise in, and increasing the trust is something that we will support uh, in the, the, the TEF in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, secondly, we will also help to uh, identify the technical requirements of uh, the data lake. 
uh, in order to harvest and process topical mobility related data. Uh, several research groups have uh, specialized uh, in this at ULB and VUB. We will also co-develop an AI-based uh, traffic and mobility inter uh, interpolation and other prediction engines, and we will focus also on the necessary dashboards and frameworks for the analysis. Uh, so this is uh, summarizing the AI regulatory sandbox, the new concept we will definitely support for the Brussels staff focus on the data architecture, also for AI uh, ethical and regulatory considerations, and then link up with the Brussels European Digital Innovation Hub, Sustain.Brussels, also uh, a, a new project that is launched uh, uh, end of last year, and that is also hosted at B Central in the FADI offices. And uh, we will focus on how to open up this Brussels staff uh, for SMEs for innovation projects using the using uh, using the uh, European Digital Innovation Hub. And I think, Elaine, finally, it's your turn again. We will we would like to conclude uh, this presentation about the power of collaboration and knowledge sharing. So, like the proverb tells us, if you go alone, you go past. But if you go together, you go far. It's true. It's not always easy to work with lots of partners from different sectors, different locations. But the benefits of knowledge sharing is, is really big. Look, we just started the Sitcom AI project, and we the Brussels public administration like STIP, Bruxelles Mobility, and Paradigm, we already tasted concretely these benefits of knowledge sharing between the Belgian partners. Let me quickly give you some concrete examples. IMIC. IMIC has an expertise in optimizing the sensor deployment. They will share their expertise. Also, they will share their expertise in digital twin development. They have already done such kind of project. And of course, their expertise in data spaces. Digital Vlaanderen, they are currently helping us and sharing their knowledge about data and metadata standardization, the famous Oslo standards, Fari. Well, Fari has an expertise in legal uh, and ethics in AI, also in uh, methodology of AI testing and citizen engagement. And then finally, private companies. Well, thanks to the fact that they are testing and validating their innovative solution that will make our cities more smarter and more sustainable. Also, thanks to the TEF, this will facilitate the adoption by the cities of their innovative solution. And thanks to the collaboration between the TEF and the European Digital Innovation Hub, it will promote the uptake by the SMEs of our ecosystem, the uptake of uh, AI-driven uh, solution. So, as you may have noticed, in this Sitcom AI project, the credible Helix collaboration is moving us forward. Thank you very much. So we're happy to take your questions. Are there any questions in the room? Yes. Yes. Hello, test, test, test. Okay, um, maybe I have a question for IMEC, um, which is because uh, IMEC is the, uh, let's say, coordinator of the, the whole Move Hub. My question is, how, how will the, the linkage be assured uh, between, let's say, a, a Belgian startup and a French node, or let's say a Dutch startup? And how will you ensure that uh, French startups don't just go to the French node and that uh, Dutch startups don't just go to the Dutch nodes, but that there is actual, yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, 
that's why we really try to to have policies around that. So we're also going to work around. Let's say we have three startups. Where are we going to send them? Um, and we're really going to focus on the sub teams itself. Uh, so it's quite clear. If there is a startup in Belgium with an idea about autonomous vehicles in last mile logistics, we will really try to push them uh, within uh, first in, in France. Uh, but let's say if there is also a touch point with one of our facilities in Brussels and Mechelen, um, we can always, always have two facilities helping uh, on it. Uh, but we're going to do and decide it on use case base. Uh, so really sub team wise. Um, but it's European project and Belgium startups, if they have a solution in power, for example, they are really, uh, yeah, we are happy to send them to the Denmark facilities or the Swedish facilities who are going to also have sub teams on different domains itself. Uh, and let's say we have a, we have a, a startup which is uh, between uh, facilities. Um, our governance we, uh, in Sitcom itself uh, will decide where it will go, uh, depending on the best match. Thank you. I have a second question for uh, Fari, uh, which concerns the uh, regulatory sandboxes or sandbox that you plan on uh, launching. My question is, one, uh, are you going to launch it before the AI Act is adopted and then change it maybe according to what is actually said in the AI Act about how they should be uh, governed? Or are you going to wait? Um, and then my second question about these sandboxes is as well, is uh, Fari planning on opening them up to other companies, or will it be only related to the TEF and TEF related projects? Thank you. Also, a very good question. We will not wait uh, on uh, for the uh, AI Act uh, to uh, to come into effect um, because uh, the AI Act and European Commission has quite clearly said that they need experience in order to set up the AI regulatory sandboxes. Uh, when you look at the AI Act, the the, the goal is also to have. AI uh, regulatory sandboxes at the national level. And the national level, that, that means that the supervisor and uh, the controller of the AI regulatory sandbox will be at the national level. But that does not mean that there cannot be sandboxes on other levels. It will be uh, uh, supervised on the national level. So we will we aim to have um, uh, some experience uh, in Brussels and in Mechelen at this moment. And then when the AI regulatory sandboxing will become uh, official after the, the pilots, the, the Spanish pilot has been run, uh, we will, of course, uh, coordinate and uh, make sure that uh, everything is uh, uh, is fully compatible but, uh, with what has been uh, decided. Um, uh, your second question is a bit unclear to me. Uh, so other companies? If you're launching a, a regulatory sandbox, as you said, like this uh, national sandbox in the AI Act is supposed to be open to any company with an idea of to yeah. test an AI yeah, model. Okay. Yeah. My question to you is, will the FARI sandbox uh, only be open to TEF-related projects? Or yeah. is it going to be open to any Brussels or Belgian startup with an AI? Yeah, first step, of idea. course, is to, because it is, it is part of this project, we want to uh, develop it uh, by focusing on the project itself. But the goal is indeed to have an AI regulatory sandbox for Brussels that is open to any uh, uh, any question of any company or government, uh, because the stakeholders are are many here. But uh, getting experience is uh, is the first thing that we need to do. Once it's up and running, it will be available to everyone. Thank you. So if that can help, where uh, AI for Belgium is releasing um, the AI assessment tool, so which is a self-assessment, it's not by any means any certification or anything like that, but uh, at least it allows you to assess whether um, the, the implementation of the AI that you're doing um, follows the ethical guidelines that are now in place already by, in the, by the EU, is the Altai, so when the URL is uh, Altai dot AI for Belgium. Uh, I guess at some point it will integrate the, the AI Act as well. No more questions? Okay, so I guess we can close the session. Thank you very much.